20% of the people give all the money. That ain't right. Another 20, same 20% do all the work. That's not right either. <laughs> and we just said, well, I wish I had. I wish I had. I didn't get it wishing. <laughs> Come on, don't give up. In the hard years, be obedient to God. I mean, when, day, when God was trying to teach me how to be obedient to my husband, oh, I thought it would kill me. <laughs> I just honestly did not think I was going to live through it. I mean, I had such rebellion in my soul because I'd been abused by my father and was married once when I was 18 and he ran around with other women all the time and I'd had other men abuse me and I had made myself promises no man is ever going to tell me what to do again. <laughs> Come on now, I got some relatives out there. And then I got to that part in the Bible about a wife should submit. And then I saw the word adapt. In the end, adapt. A wife should adapt herself to her husband. I didn't even know how to spell that, let alone do it. it gave, when I read that, it gave me the creepy crawlies. Do you think that I would be standing here today if I was still smart-mouthing him behind the scenes? But some of you, God's dealing with you about not having a rebellious attitude. Well, oh, bless God. <laughs> you talk about your boss behind his back. You judge and criticize your pastor. You got something to say about everybody because, of course, you know more than anybody else in the whole world. You know, the people who think they know the best, it has been scientifically proven the people who think they know the most know the least. We don't know anything till we know we don't know anything. Come on now. When the Bible says die to self, it's about that pain that rips through your soul. When God asks you to do something that you don't want to do, but you have read Romans 12, 1, and you have made a decisive dedication that you are going to do what God asked you to do because you believe that he's good and that anything he asks you to do is ultimately going to turn out for your good. Come on now. You say, well, my boss is a jerk. Do you really want me to take the time to go to 1 Peter to tell you what, to read you what the Bible has to say about how to treat an overbearing boss? It says, be submissive to him, treat him kindly. <laughs> you have got to be kidding! <laughs> and see, then we get in, well, why? Why? That's not fair. That's not right. Was it fair for Jesus to go to the cross and take your sins? God's not asking us to do what everybody else does. He's not asking us to do what's easy or convenient or what's popular. He's asking us to, to do what he's asking us to do for his glory. It took me a lot of years to get to where I didn't talk back to Dave. Still do it a little bit. <laughs> but but j just to really little bit actually we've got a great relationship Dave likes my little sassy temperament <laughs> and if he means business I'll shut up I'm not done you know the Bible says that the love of Christ controls us and compels us to do what's right the more you fall in love with Jesus the more you're going to be willing to do what he tells you to do whether it's comfortable for you or not you know, to be honest, I'd still rather do what I want to do all the time. And you would too. I still ain't real crazy about submission or adapting. We all want our own way. 
but I would not purposely be rebellious to an authority over me now. You know why? Because I know that it would affect the anointing on my life, and that's the only thing that I've got, and I wouldn't mess with that for anything. I wasn't happy when I was a rebellious woman. I want you to look at 2 Thessalonians. It says that the spirit of Antichrist that is already at work in the world is the spirit of rebellion. Now, please, let's get this. What do we see in the world today? The Antichrist is already on the scene because everywhere we look, we have rebellion, 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 rebellion. But we can't be part of it. That's not what God has called us to. And the more the rest of the world disobeys God, the more we need to press in and be determined to obey God. As the dark gets darker, the light has to get lighter. And here's what we're in danger of doing, sliding right along with them. It's easy to go with the tide. It's a little hard when you swim against it. Don't you dare just do what everybody else does. Don't you sit at the lunch table and gossip about your boss because everybody else does. You go somewhere and pray for him. You go pray for all the other people. And when they ask you what you think, you just say, you know what? I'm blessed to have a job. He may not do everything right, but I don't either. Come on. And I tell you what, the more I hear people yell against God, the more I intend to yell for him. I tell you what, I love being on this television program and looking into that screen and saying God is alive. He's the first and the last. He is everything in between. You are not going to get rid of God. I don't care what you try to do. God is alive on planet Earth. And when everything else is gone, God will still be here. Amen, amen. 2 Samuel 24, 18. Then Gad came to David and said, Go and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aranah the Jebusite. So David went up according to Gad's word as the Lord had commanded. And Aranah looked and saw the king and his servants coming toward him, and he went and he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Aranah said, why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, I want to buy the threshing floor from you to build an altar to the Lord that the plague may be stayed from the people. A plague had gotten into the camp, and when David got the word of the Lord, what he was told to do was go and, and build an altar on this threshing floor to get rid of the plague. So he went to this other king to buy the property to do it. And Aronah said to David, let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good to him. Behold, here are oxen for burnt sacrifice and threshing instruments. And so he says, here, let me give you everything you need. I'm gonna give you the ground, I'm gonna give you the wood, I'm gonna give you the fire, I'm gonna give you everything you need. Now look what David said. All this, O king, Aronah gives to the king. And Aronah said to the king, the Lord your God, accept you. But King David said to him, no. I will buy it for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God of that which costs me nothing. Is your obedience costing you nothing? Do you stop at the point where it starts to get uncomfortable? Do you leave the meeting when you start to squirm in your seat? When your teachers or your preachers confront you, do you just go find another church to go to? When your boss corrects you, do you just go get, find another job? When your husband asks you 12 times to do something you want to do over a period of 12 years, you just go get another one? Bless God, nobody's going to tell me what to do. I got pushed around all my life. Nobody's going to tell me what to do again. Won't work. Won't work. Won't work. Won't work. Won't work. 
Let's make a decision today before we leave that if we're going to obey God, it is going to cost us something. But let me tell you something. The price that we pay for obedience is nothing compared to the dividends that we get on the other side. Amen. Come on, let's stand up with me today. Well, as I mentioned today, Romans chapter 12 instructs us to surrender ourselves, and that's something only we can do, surrender ourselves as a living sacrifice. You know, I believe it may cost us a little bit of something to walk in God's will by that. You know, we may not exactly like everything God wants us to do, but we can have an inner knowing that it's going to work out best for us. One of the things that has really come to help me a lot is to realize that anything God asks me to do or asks me not to do, He's never trying to make it hard on me. He's never trying to take anything away from me. He basically only wants the best for each and every one of us. So following God's plan for us is always going to work out the best for us. And you know what the good news is? He will even help us to do the thing that he asks us to do. Somebody else might ask you to do something for them, but then offer no help. But God sends his Holy Spirit to help us be obedient to him. So when you're struggling with something, all you need to do is say, God, help me. I depend on you. I lean on you. I cannot do it without you. And then you can watch God work through you. Remember John 15, 5 says, apart from him, we can do nothing. Now, we've been talking about obedience and the importance of obedience and the blessing of obedience. So we're offering four hours of teaching about obedience, following the narrow path to the greatest life. And I believe that's going to be a real blessing to you. There are two paths that we can choose. The Bible says, I set before you life and death, choose life. Jesus talked about the, the broad path and the narrow path. We're encouraged to take the narrow path. I always say on the narrow path, I don't have a lot of room for all my fleshly baggage, but it sure leads me to the best life. And you know what? We're offering that to you today for your gift to the ministry of any amount. That's how much we want you to have it. We're going to trust you to send in your very best gift. Now, don't do just a little bit because you think you can. If that's all you can do, then do that. But if you can do more, do it. That way, maybe you can help make up for some of the people who really don't have very much to send in. This is a way that you can let us bless you with the word. You can bless us with your financial gift to help us not only with the TV expenses, but also to help people all over the world. And you can be a blessing to one another just by providing and helping. So I just want to thank you for ahead of time for your obedience. And I want you to have the greatest day that you could possibly ever have in Jesus name. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship, life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Hershey, Pennsylvania, August 7th through 9th with worship by Fused Worship and Toronto, Ontario, August 21st through 23rd with worship by Israel Houghton. All sessions are free. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. They look sad and get downhearted, and then they look at you, get make eye contact, and you smile, and they read that smile, and then they start smiling, and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just you would you're hooked. <laughs> The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.